Hey, what's going on guys? Kitsune TCG here back with another video and today I thought I would just go ahead and do a last minute um, tier list for the upcoming NA and EUWCQ. Um, obviously it looks like we are not going to be getting a ban list unless Konami really does just drop a last minute one which at that point would rather just test for this event, you know, kind of continue getting some testing in. I um, thought I'd just kind of go ahead and make this list based off of what my testing has looked like and yeah, just kind of go from there. So if you've been liking the videos or anything like that, please feel free to subscribe, like the video, comment below what you think, you know, maybe what you're going to be playing. Um, hopefully I will see some of y'all there at the NAWCQ here in about a few weeks. So go ahead and kick it off with Pearly now and i think that's what this tier kind of stands for is the can top is really just if you have a good pilot i could see maybe one maybe two um sneak in to a top cut uh pearly is a good deck it's got some cards back it's pretty much at full strength you know barring two cards being at two it's just that the format has you know kind of gone so far past it that at this point, it could top, wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see any tops. Uh, Pure Snake Eyes, I think we will see a top, maybe two, um, without the Fiendsmith engine. I think the majority of players that are playing Snake Eyes are going to have the Fiendsmith engine ready, which is the only reason why I'm putting it where I am. Obviously, you know, it, it's possible, especially because the set is coming out a day before uh, the NAWCQ, that some players who have Snake Eyes just don't have the ability to get the Fiendsmith package um, in time. And for that reason, I still think it's a very strong deck. I still think that um, it will do well without it. I just don't think there will be many players that don't play the Fiendsmith version. So for that reason, I still think we'll see one or two tops without it. Uh, as far as can win, obviously you have to talk about Snake Eyes, Fiendsmith. Um, it, it will be the deck to beat. I would not be surprised. Um, and quite frankly, I expect to win it, it to win NA and probably the EU as well. We'll just kind of have to see how it plays out. But that is just, I think, what everybody's expecting at this point. Uh, Melodious, very similar situation to Pearly, despite it pretty much being, I mean, it, it is at full power. I just think that the format is too powerful for this deck, even as strong as it is. It doesn't run enough non-engine, and all the top decks really need to do that in order to stay competitive. So for that reason, you know, I mean, it obviously runs a lot of hand traps. I just don't think it runs enough in its main to kind of make it a viable, you know, kind of guaranteed will top. So I think for that reason, you know, maybe one, maybe two. And then for flow, I'm kind of put it in the same kind of can top. I think it's in a decent position. When it gets going, the deck is very strong. You know, obviously main decking shifter can just really kill a lot of decks. And, you know, kind of for that reason, I think depending on like matchups and things like that, I could really, realistically, we could see a few maybe sneak it into top cut. Um, I don't think the new Max C retrain will be that big of a difference for this deck. Obviously, that is the deck that gets hit the most since everything you're summoning comes from hand. I just don't think that it's going to matter too much because I don't think too many people are going to realistically play that at this point. Um, maybe a few people will have it in their side deck, but I don't think enough that really hurts the chances. I mean, it already doesn't have that great of chances, but I don't think it affects that that much more so for that reason i could still maybe see a few people topping with that uh with pure chimera i don't really think there's any shot just because i don't think that if you're bringing chimera you're bringing the pure version i think most people are going to be bringing the chimera fiendsmith if you are bringing chimera and i think that has a pretty good chance of topping itself um, i'm pretty sure we will see a few tops across the two events don't think it's the strongest way to play the deck, but I definitely think that it will be a way that we do see some people play. Moving on to Ritual Beast. Ritual Beast is probably the top of the can top group. Um, 
It's a very strong deck, obviously has some great interactions. If you are familiar with the combos and you're well practiced in it, I think that you can do a whole lot with the deck. Uh, and then for a lot of people, you know, the, the the deck has so many combo lines, has so many like routes that it can take that maybe can be a little bit hard to know like what to hand trap, what to hit. And I think that can definitely help it top. But I think beyond that, I don't think that the we'll see consistent tops or any, you know, real shot at winning. So for that reason, it's going to be, you know, kind of like in a maybe situation of a, just maybe a few at max um, will top. Tempai, I think, is the deck that's just set to have a nice amount of tops, but I don't know if realistically it will win any of these events, but I think if there is a deck that will win that's not Snake Eyes, I think it has to be Tempai. Um, it matches up okay. I mean, you know, you're going second deck, so you're pretty much letting your, co your opponent combo it does allow you to play a lot of hand traps going second cards. So for that reason, you know, I think it can do well, and I think it will do well. We'll see if it's actually able to kind of win anything, uh, but we will definitely see some tops, and I definitely think that you'll see it um, higher up as we go into top cut. Sword Soul, unfortunately no shot. One of my all-time favorite decks, but at this point it's just been power crept, so it definitely won't see it would be very surprised if we saw even one in top cut so unfortunate but that's just kind of how the format has continued to evolve uh regular fiend or regular ubel i think is an okay deck um again very similar situation to like regular snake eyes if you're bringing ubel you're going to bring the fiend smith version unless you just were not able to get it together in a day's time for the na version uh, so for that reason, I can maybe see one or two kind of pure versions top. And maybe being a little bit optimistic with Ubel Fiendsmith, but I do think that it is a very good deck overall. Uh, so I could definitely see it winning, but I would still be a little bit surprised if it wasn't Snake Eyes. So for that reason, I think it is a very strong deck. I think that we'll definitely see a lot of tops from it. But, you know, I think it does have the capacity to win, so for that reason, it definitely kind of goes in this slot. Ice Barrier, I don't think it has any shot. Um, I don't realistically think anybody's bringing that to try and top. Um, it's seen some success since it's come out, but I think with the Fiendsmith package, this just kind of doesn't do anything, so just don't think we're going to see any tops realistically. Same thing with Centurion, um, I mean the deck has a turn skip built in that you can summon, but you know it just it just doesn't come up enough. Um, so many other decks that are doing well just can place so many hand traps that your odds of getting that turn skip off are not great, so would be really surprised if one or two topped. So for that reason I don't think that there's really going to be any. Runic Stun? I think is the next best of the rest. It's a budget deck, and I think that it's going to be a very competitive, very strong deck. Obviously, its cards trade very favorably against most, you know, other decks. So for that reason, I think it will do really well. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I think a lot of people should be prepared for this kind of deck. Make sure that you have something in the side deck that can deal with Runic Stun. But I still think that, um, you know, anytime you have, like, an anti-meta deck, the, those players, they know their matchups with everything, and I still think that the deck will top um, and will do actually pretty well. Sprite, with kind of the Ice Barrier engine that allows it to summon Toad, I think can top. Um, obviously, we did see it have some success at some other WCQs, um, but... I think again with info releasing there's just a little bit more of a power creep and I don't think that we could realistically expect a top from this deck but I wouldn't be surprised if we did have one or two. Same thing with the White Woods archetype there are so many different variants of it that I wouldn't be surprised if one of them topped just because you know again with it being a little bit newer of an archetype maybe people don't know where best to hit it. 
but I don't realistically expect that there will be too many tops if there are going to be any. Uh, branded. Branded is in a little bit of a interesting spot. Um, obviously, with Gimmit Puppet existing, you know, the Puppet Lock sometimes doesn't work, but I don't think that, that hugely matters too much. Uh, we'll still definitely see it top. I just don't think that it will win the event or you know, go too far into top cut, just with the other decks being so much stronger. So definitely we'll see Branded up there, but would be surprised if it was at some of the higher tables toward the end. Uh, Evil Twin Fiendsmith is a fun deck, but I don't think it has any shot. I don't think there's anybody that's realistically bringing this to top the event, but you'll probably see it there um, of, among a few players just because it is a fan favorite deck. Uh, Gimmick Puppet, I know a lot of people are really hyping it up. Um, maybe I could see somebody trying to, to go with it realistically, especially with the new cards and maybe people just not knowing what they do, but I really just don't think that there's going to be any shot of it um, making top cut. Um, played a few, played it a few times, um, and it just it seems strong, but I just don't think it's strong enough for this format. Uh, obviously, same with the new Millennium deck, that it, it's cool deck, fun gameplay, definitely not competitive. Uh, low and Voiceless Voice, same thing again. I think with a good pilot and someone that's really dedicated to the strategy, I think they have the capacity to top. But I think for the most part, I would still be a little bit surprised to see, you know, a few in top cut, um, especially just as the format has continued to kind of like power creep and power creep, um, voiceless has just really fallen off. But I still think it's possible that maybe a few sneak in. So that's overall the tier list. Let me know down below what y'all think, and I will see y'all next time.